Hey, so this one is gonna be a bit different, probably a bit slower, a bit longer. That's because we're gonna do some GLSL today. We are going to do circle packing. Circle packing. As usual, let's start with the render network. Add a circle sop, connect it to a gel comb, add a camera, add a wireframe mat, add a render top, and apply the mat to the gel. We don't need these lines, so go to circle parameters and set it to be a NURBS curve. Let's set a black background, add a transfer on top, activate this switch and set the alpha to 1. Now let's deal with packing circles. Add a constant top, set everything to 0, set the resolution to 10x10, 10 10, disable interpolation and set pixel format to 32-bit float. Add a GLSL top. Set the mode to compute shader, it says we need to use GLSL 4.3, so set the version to 4.3. Hide the pixel shader, show the compute shader, and let's open it in an external editor. Get rid of these lines, uncommand this line. We're gonna use it for circles, not colors, so let's declare a backfall variable called circle. And we need to output the circle. Go back to touch designer, add a null, go to gel comp, enable instancing. Let's use this null as a translate operator. We need to use R and G for X and Y parameters. Let's also use it as a scale operator. Go with B for all the axes. As you can see, the circle is gone. That's because everything is set to zero right now. We need a way to grow these circles and store computed values. So let's insert a feedback top right here. Go back to our GLSL. Let's declare a VAC4 function called grow. It's gonna take back for circle as a parameter. Since we're using the blue channel for the radius, we need to increase the circle B by some amount and return the circle. Now we can call it in our main function and make sure that we save the result to our circle variable. If we go back and reset the feedback, we can see the circle grow into infinity. Now let's add a keyboard in chop to reset the feedback. Let's also add a uniform to our GLSL top. Call it U growth rate and set it to 0.001. Now let's utilize that uniform in our code. And instead of adding 0.1, we're gonna add U growth rate. Now we can easily control the speed. We've got growing circles, they grow and they never stop. We probably need to add some sort of boundaries. Let's add a bool function called edges. Um, it's gonna take a back for a circle and check if it's still within our boundaries. To do that, we need two more uniforms. Uniform float U width and uniform float U height. Now add those uniforms here for width and height. To make this a bit more readable, let's add float variable X equal to the circle R, float Y equal circle G, and float R for the radius equal circle B. The way you can see if the circle has reached the boundary is rather simple. You take the right boundary, which is U width, and if the circle X plus the radius is greater than the U width, that means that the circle should stop growing. And the process is kind of the same for all the other boundaries. So here we need to check if x plus r is greater than u width or x minus r is less than u width. And the same goes for y and u height. Now return it, go to our main function. If not edges, circle, then we're gonna grow it. Oh yeah. And I've forgotten a semicolon here. Let's check it. It grows. Let's increase the speed. Boom. It stops growing right at the edge, even if it's not positioned in the center. We see only one circle, but there are actually like 100 circles. They just have the same coordinates and radius, so we need to randomize it. Let's add a noise top. Copy paste resolution parameter from our constant to the noise top. Disable interpolation and set pixel format to 32-bit float. 
Go to noise parameters and set the offset to zero. Connect it to the second input of the GLSL top. Now duplicate the noise, disable monochrome, connect it to the third input of the GLSL and change the seed. Go to our code, duplicate this line twice, let's call the second one mask, change the input index and the third one should be new pose for new position. We need to store info if the circle is active somewhere. Let's use the alpha channel for that. If circle alpha equals 1, that means we can grow the circle. If not, check the mask value and if it's greater than 0.5, we give the circle RNG values from the new pose and set the alpha to 1. Now we have some variety, but we only see 5 circles and that's because our mask is not moving, so let's make it move. Go to transform parameters and do the apps time.seconds multiplied by 0.2 and now we are adding circles one by one based on our mask. The last problem we need to solve is to stop these circles from overlapping each other. First of all, we need two variables, resolution x and y in pixels, and we can fetch that info from a uniform provided by Touch Designer, which is called UTDR2D2. No, no, it's not, it's actually UTD2D infos. Res B and A contain the exact values we want. Let's define another pool function and call it can grow. It will take a vec4 circle as an input. By default, let's assume that the circle can grow, so return true. We need to iterate over all the pixels in our buffer and we can do that by using a nested loop. Now we can sample the exact pixel we need. Just copy paste our taxel fetch function from below. Let's call the variable other circle and use our x and y for coordinates. If we take this pixel and we iterate over all pixels, at some point we'll have the same pixel as other circle. I, I hope it makes sense. And we don't want to do that. Why would we? So let's just check. And if circle R equals other circle R and the circle G equals other circle G, we're just gonna do nothing. If not, we can find the distance between two circle centers and check whether it's greater than the sum of their radiuses. Look, on the left everything is fine and the circle can grow. And on the right we know they are overlapping. There is a handy function in GLSL to find the distance called distance and if the sum of the radiuses is greater than the distance we gonna return false finally go to main and call this function right here now we can play with different parameters such as noise amplitude or our uniforms we can also add a ramp with the same resolution and use it as our color operator in the gel we can change the material type to constant, so yeah, that's the basic circle packing. I hope you find this tutorial useful, consider subscribing to this channel and supporting me on Patreon, that's also where you can get all the project files and more tutorials. Okay, it's only one tutorial right now, but I I'm gonna upload the next one soon. That's it for now, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.